Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. This week, we're going to be talking about wood routers, and we'd like to thank Jim Z for liking and sharing the podcast. Book 11 is going to the editor, and we'll let you know when it's going to be published. You can check out our previous 10 ebooks. They're called Home Improvement Solutions what every homeowner should know, and you can check them out on Amazon. In 1905, a New York company came out with a handheld wood router. It was 12 inches in diameter and weighed about 60 pounds. (laughs) Some of the first small handheld plunge routers were developed in Germany in the late 1940s, and in the 1950s there were about 50 different router bit styles, and now there are hundreds and hundreds of different (laughs) styles. If you plan on doing woodworking projects around the house, a router is one of the key power tools. You can put a decorative shape on the edge of pieces of wood for molding around windows and doors or baseboard. You can shape wood, cut out a space for hinges. You can create... I think you say woodward. Wood. You can create... Wood, weird engines, and closets. (laughs) You know what's cool about a wood router? What? Is you can create joints, like a French dovetail joint, a dado, a groove, or a rabbit. So you can make boxes. What are those words that you just said? (laughs) So different types of joints to put things together. Like to make a box. So you can create drawers, cabinets, bookcases. You can make a frame for pictures or a mirror. You can make items like a cutting board with a decorative edge, small dishes, organizers, or plaques. You can do inlay work. Mm-hmm. You can cut holes for pegs or bench dogs for your workbench. Uh-huh. You can also cut and trim laminate. Exciting. I have a Craftsman one and a half horsepower two handle fixed base router. It takes quarter inch shank bits. Have it's, you ever used it? Yeah, you know, I use it primarily for trimming laminates for countertops. Uh-huh. So I moved in this last house I'm in now. That house needed so much work, I decided just to spray paint the old kitchen cabinets and cover the countertops with a new laminate till I had the time and money to replace everything in the kitchen. Are you done yet? (laughs) Yes. I bought rolls of laminate to cover the old countertop, and I measured it so when I cut off the excess, that extra would cover the edges and the backsplash. I removed the sink, I sanded the old countertop, and I used contact adhesive on the countertop and the back of the new laminate up to where it would make contact with Mm -hmm. the countertop. And then with the router on top of the countertop, I used a laminate bit with a bearing that guides the bit, and that way you get an exact flush cut to the counter. I pushed the router counterclockwise around the outside of the countertop And then I cut a hole in the area where the sink was going to go and cut out the laminate in there. And I went in a clockwise direction for the most control when I was on the inside of the counter. So I take it the direction matters? Right, the direction of the bit. So when you're holding a router in front of you and the bit is facing down, as you look down, the bit is spinning in a clockwise direction. And if you push the bit up against the outside edge of a piece of wood that's in front of you, you're going to have the most control if you push it against the natural rotation of the bit and go counterclockwise or in the opposite direction that it wants to move. So if you push it up against a piece of wood, it wants to pull you clockwise around and you're going to be pushing it counterclockwise for the most control. Okay. If you're in the middle of a piece of wood, like in that sink area in a countertop, you would push it in a clockwise direction, which is now against the rotation of the bit. And for beginners, this is going to give you the most control. This is called a push cut. Okay. For some projects, depending on the type of wood or the grain direction, a push cut could tear or pull up the wood fibers, creating a rough finish. You'll get a smoother cut with a climb cut which is moving in the direction that the bit wants to move. It takes more concentration to control the router, and you may need to make multiple passes, starting out shallow and slowly going deeper if you're removing a lot of material. Climb cuts are also good for some corners to prevent the wood from chipping. So how do you know what to use? 
a lot of this is just experience or practice with your tool and the bit you're using. So it's always nice to get some scrap wood right. first and, and practice. <laughs> you really haven't explained what a wood router is. So it's really just a motor connected to a bit with a base to hold it on top of your work surface. Mm -hmm. And the main types are trim, a mid-size, full-size, then you have fixed base and plunge base. The small trim routers, or they could be called a laminate router or a palm router, are very small and you can grip it with one hand. Mm -hmm. A trim router is good for cutting laminate and edge banding. You what can, is that? Edge banding is where you cover the edge of plywood or other boards with a decorative laminate edge. And, though, and so you can buy rolls. And that has a name? Yeah, yeah, it's cool. So you can buy this laminate or, you know, they have plastic decorative pieces that have a glue on it. Some are activated with an iron or you can use spray adhesive or contact adhesive and then you would trim that with a router. You can also use a trim router for shaping the edges of wood, cutting out a mortise for a hinge, and small joint work creating tongues and grooves. Trim routers are usually three-quarter to one and a quarter horsepower three to seven amps, and most of them will be using quarter-inch bits. Huh. Mid-size routers are great for most projects a homeowner would do from trimming laminate to woodworking, and you can get a router table to mount your router in for more control with creating wood joints. A mid-size router will have two handles, usually one and a half to two and a half horsepower, eight to 13 amps, and most will take quarter-inch or half-inch bits for larger work. Hmm. A full-size router will have two handles, usually two and a half to three and a half horsepower, 11 to 15 amps, and most will take quarter-inch and half-inch bits. Full-size routers are heavier, though. I compared... Are they 60 pounds? <laughs> no, they brought it down <laughs> from, from that weight. So a few of the routers I compared, a laminate router I looked at was 5.5 amps, 1.5 horsepower. It weighed 3.8 pounds. A midsize I looked at, 11 amp, 1 and 3 quarter horsepower with a fixed base was 8 pounds. And a full size 15 amp, 3 and a quarter horsepower fixed base, 14 and a half pounds. Yeah. So it's a big jump from, you know, a light handheld thing to a full size and that's, what, that's why that mid-size is nice in that 8-pound range. Pretty right. easy to control. What's a fixed base? So you can get a fixed base or a plunge base. The most common router for shaping edges, creating joints, and cutting laminate is a fixed base. So you're adjusting the depth of the bit in relation to the base and how deep it will extend for your cuts. And it, it locks into that size. It's just fixed. Many will have micro-adjustments for great accuracy. In general, a fixed base has better depth control, and most fixed base midsize and large routers will fit into a wide range of tables. Okay. The disadvantage of a fixed base router is you're not able to plunge cut into wood safely. The base on a plunge cut router allows you to position the bit above the wood and now lower it down into the wood safely so you can create holes for dowels or bench dogs. You can create grooves or mortises, patterns in the center of a piece of wood so you can do decorative work, and then it lifts up and out. And some plunge cutters aren't easily connected to a table. So I would check to see if it could be locked in position for a table because that's a nice option to have. Okay. I really appreciated all the hand motions, by the way. <laughs> some routers come with two bases for the motor. So you have a fixed base and a plunge base, and no you, just, you just swap it from one to the other. And this is going to give you more flexibility for your projects. Or look for a fixed base router that has the option that you can buy a plunge base, and it'll fit into that. The company Triton, it's T-R-I-T-O-N, they have a dual-mode plunge router that can switch from plunge to a fixed base without swapping out the bases just has a switch to lock it in place. Huh. It also can be attached to a router track that they have, and they also have a router table that it fits into. Cool. When you're comparing routers, many will have the horsepower listed, although horsepower can be misleading. Depend Why? Well, you can either have peak horsepower or sustained horsepower, and you don't know how the company measured it. 
peak horsepower is the highest power that the tool can handle for a very short period of time. Okay. It wouldn't be able to sustain that without damaging the tool. The other measurement is sustained horsepower, which is how much maximum power the tool can run at for long periods without damage. UL ratings are based on amps or watts. They don't use horsepower. So the UL rating is what the tool can run at the rated amount without overheating or failing, and UL recommends comparing amps or watts. Although some pros say if you're comparing models from the same company, horsepower can be a guide between their models. Okay. The amp rating is important if you'll be using an extension cord. You want your extension cord to match the amps of your power tool or be rated higher than your tool. An extension cord that's underrated will overheat, which will damage the cord over time, and it doesn't allow enough flow of electric, which will damage your tool and shorten its life. And if you're shopping for an extension cord for power tools, get one that's rated for the highest amp tool you have at the longest length, and then everything else will work with that cord. Uh -huh. And if you'll be using it for outdoor projects, get outdoor rated and grounded. If you're doing projects on a roof, climbing ladders, using an electric lawnmower, or landscaping tools, a locking extension cord will prevent the cord from pulling away from your tool while you're working. A couple top-rated locking cords are from Southwire. It's S-O-U-T-H-W-I-R-E. The connector side, the female side, has a switch, so it locks the power cord from your tool with a 30-pound pull rating. Okay. Badass extension cords, it's B-A-D, capital A-S-S, they have locking extension cords with pro-lock connectors. You just push a three-pronged plug from your tool into the connector and it automatically locks with 80 pounds of pull pressure. And this has a collar that you pull down to release the cord. The connector end has a light to show it's properly grounded for safety. So that's a nice feature. What does this have to do with router? <laughs> always use a locking extension cord so you always have power. If you're shopping cordless routers, compare the volt ratings. In general, higher volts will give more power, especially for larger bits. The amp rating or amp hours, it's capital A, small case H, is the battery storage capacity or how long a battery will hold a charge. Okay. You should compare the speeds. One speed is good for quarter inch bits and small diameter bits. Variable speed routers are good when you're working with a lot of different material and bit sizes. You generally want slower speeds for larger bits for more control and a smoother finish. Small bits tend to work better at high speeds. Okay. And then there's something called a soft start, so it starts out slow. This is going to give you more control. It's better when you need a very smooth finish for your project. Interesting. Some models have electronics that analyze the hardness of the wood and the load that's being put on the bit, and it automatically adjusts the speed. So you can look for electronic variable speed. Different manufacturers have different terms for that. A router that can take quarter inch or half inch bits is going to be more versatile. You should also compare how the bits are changed. Some routers need two wrenches to make a bit change. A router with a spindle lock only needs one wrench, which is easier. If you plan on doing woodworking projects with a router table, check how easy it is to adjust the cutting height. If you see that it has above the table adjustment, that means you can adjust it with a knob or there's a tool. So you don't have to go underneath the table to adjust the height of the bit or you don't have to flip it over. Okay. Compare the handle shape and where the power switch is. Some D-handle routers have a trigger design that's easy to use. Some will have left hand or right hand options so you can operate the switch by your dominant hand. Hmm. You should compare where the power cord comes out of the router from and the length see which one's more comfortable, and also the length is important when you're using it, where you'll be using your router. How easy is it to adjust the height, and can you do micro adjustments? I would also look at how loud they are in decibels, and you'll see small case D, capital B. Anything over 85 decibels, you should be wearing hearing protection. Right. Another feature to compare is, does your router have a port so you can connect to a hose to pull away dust into a wet dry vac? 
especially if you're going to be working with material like MDF, which creates a lot of dust. When I took some training at the last hardware show from the mask company Soft Seal, it's S-O-F-T, capital S-E-A-L, they said one mistake that many homeowners make when they run to the hardware store for a mask is not getting one rated for hazardous dust like sawdust. Right. So you need a disposable respirator rather than a dust mask, and it needs to be marked NIOSH, capital N-I-O-S-H, and it needs to have a rating of N, R, or P, and a level of protection, 95, 99, or 100. And they said for projects like this, N95 is the best balance between cost and effectiveness. Right. You should probably explain what the N, R, and P stand for. N means it's not resistant to oil. R, it's somewhat resistant. And P means it's oil proof. And this is for airborne particles that are 0.3 microns or larger when you get a NIOSH rated disposable respirator. So pretty impressive. (laughs) OSHA says wood dust can cause respiratory problems and cancer. The National Cancer Institute says wood dust can cause nasal cancer decreased lung capacity, allergic reactions, and inflammation of the lungs. And some wood has chemicals that can cause headaches, loss of weight, breathlessness, and a regular heartbeat. Hmm. Some top-rated routers come from DeWalt, capital D-E, capital W-A-L-T, Bosch, B-O-S-C-H, Makita, M-A-K-I-T-A, Porter Cable, P-O-R-T-E-R-C-A-B-L-E, Triton, T-R-I-T-O-N, Festool, F-E-S-T-O-O-L, Rigid, R-I-D-G-I-D, and Milwaukee. You're not going to spell that? I refuse. (laughs) Do it anyways. M-L- M- See, see, I'm having a hard time with Milwaukee. M-I-L-W-A-U-K-E-E. Thank you. Do you have anything else to add? We should have our new book, Book 11, out in the next couple of weeks. It's going to have 11 chapters, and it's going to be fantastic. And we'll let you know when we publish. Let's wrap this up, then. You can subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, CastBox, or your favorite podcast app. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our ebooks, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, books 1 through 10 on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. You can follow Cindy on Twitter at fixitcohost. And you can follow us on Instagram, fixithomeimprovement. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week.